Amen and welcome, a thousand welcomes. It is such a great gift to be able to gather together in the light, reminding ourselves of the truth, reminding ourselves of the real, reminding ourselves that each of us is that beloved of God that we began meditating. And so the topic today is fullness. I'm just um, connecting with that inwardly. That fullness, that allness, that all adorable oneness that each of us is always takes us beyond name and form. So it takes us beyond the bounds of a separate individual human life. And it also takes us beyond all concepts, beyond all ideas. And so a couple of ways to do this, and some of them are amazing and inspiring, and one of them is gross. So I'm giving you the gross warning. This is the gross warning, but you'll love it. You'll love it, love it, love it too. So one of the amazing and inspiring ways to connect with this is in the form of a teaching that comes um, through the Zen tradition. And this is a teaching that says when Buddhas are truly Buddhas, they do not conceive of themselves as Buddhas. And so just to give you an example, Padma just did this. She said, you might feel like a glow worm, but this helps you be a lighthouse. <laughs> and so Padma is a lighthouse, and we can see that. But anytime she feels like a glow worm, it's really helpful to have meditation community friends who can say, lighthouse, your lighthouseness is showing all over the place. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed, but you're a lighthouse. <laughs> so each of us is invited to do this and to be this and to remind ourselves, but also everyone else. And this is true of everyone. Everyone, everyone, everyone. So this might be someone that you drive by or you ride by them on a bus or you see them and they are in incredible human distress and they're experiencing what humans would say is incredible human disgrace. They're a lighthouse in their true nature. Nothing ever touches their lighthouseness. Nothing. And so the body can be broken, the heart can be broken, we all know this, we all have walked through this. Nothing diminishes the lighthouseness of each and every one of us. And it's also natural and healthy for that Zen teaching is telling us all it's not a big deal. There's nothing that's a big deal that we experience in time and space, even realizing that our own lighthouseness is our true nature, that's not a big deal. So even being the kindness and the generosity that we are forever, that's not a big deal. That's just being our true selves. And so when Buddhas are truly Buddhas, they do not conceive of themselves as Buddhas. They just are awakeness. They just are kindness. They just are forgiveness. And they would just say, I'm just here. I'm just being what I can be right now right in the midst of my daily life. And so that's the sacred part. Now I'm gonna tell you the gross part, which is also really cool. <laughs> so Friday, and we began our meditation uh, connecting with this in a really uplifting and holy way. So each of us is walking around in this amazing body temple. Like it's an incredible miracle. It's a divine vehicle that we are in, this incredible human body. And I also know it doesn't feel like it all the time. So I was out this morning and my neighbor was out this morning and he was like, oh, Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> and I mean, so the body sometimes feels like that. He was groaning about his neck and his shoulders. And that's a reality. That's an aspect of being in the body. So it might not be your neck and shoulders that ache, but chances are there's some part of this beautifully designed body temple that aches. And it's a miracle. And so Friday, I was talking with a microbiologist and he was talking about the properties of neutrophils. And so the surgeon in the house knows this, but the rest of us might not remember that neutrophils are part of our white blood cells. And here's how cool they are. So anytime the body has a pathogen, so something it feels like it wants or needs to protect or defend you against, the neutrophils explode and they spray bleach all over the pathogen in order to kill the pathogen. And then this is newly published, but scientists now think that they also create these little spiderweb kind of 
nets that gather up the dead bacteria, the dead virus, and kind of prepare to convey it gracefully out of your body. And here's the gross part. That's why your snot turns green. <laughs> so, it's working. That's the neutrophils spraying bleach. But you needed to know that. It's miraculous. It's your miraculous body. Each of us has like this incredible army of divine love working on our behalf. And unless we're a microbiologist or we're the surgeon in the house, most of us don't even know this. We just take it for granted. We blow our nose and we're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and your body is loving you. Your body is love in action, and that is actually divine beauty in action that you're looking at in your handkerchief. <laughs> so just to remember the miraculousness of this, of this divine body temple that we inhabit, no matter how it feels. And this allows us to have strength and courage. So no matter what it is that we're moving through, this allows us to have strength and courage. And so that incredible teaching with which we begin, and I'm going to remind us in case some people join late or in case we just want a reminder. So we also could label this how to transform fear. So any time you need to transform fear, connect with this teaching from David. And David is the beloved. David is the beloved within each of us. And David sings to each of us. This divine belovedness within each of us sings. In God I trust and am not afraid. And you can feel the assuredness instantly. Like you can feel the way your energy shifts instantly. You can feel that divine strength and courage infuse the cells in your body, the muscles, the tissues. You can feel the way you're connecting with that divine love, that divine warmth, that divine provider, which is within each of us. So in God I trust and am not afraid, transform fear. Any time fear arises within yourself, if you're in a meeting, and the room starts to become filled with fear, silently, inwardly, in God I trust and am not afraid. And it can help shift the room for, it can help shift the energy for everyone who's in that room. If you're talking to someone on the phone and they're feeling that, or if you're like on a bus or on a train or you're walking through a post office or a grocery store and you experience someone who's in agitation, someone who's clearly in a wave of fear, silently, in God I trust and am not afraid. And it helps transform everywhere that you are. Another thing that David says in that same song, and this is for the, for the aspect within each of us, which is like, how do I keep going? <laughs> so this is, when I need to keep going, and I don't know how, how to keep going, if you want a little subheading for this particular teaching. David says, I walk in the light of life. And you can instantly feel, I don't know how to keep going, I walk in the light of life. The next step comes into view. I walk in the light of life. And it will show you what the next step is. It will show you what the step after that is. Sometimes we see two or three steps ahead. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we just say, I walk in the light of life. So here's a fun pop quiz. I'm going to share a line with you in a moment. And the question is, is this A, from a country music song, <laughs> sung by a really melodramatic human lover, <laughs> or B, scripture. <laughs> so you remember your two options, right? Country music song sung by a really melodramatic human lover, or scripture. OK, and here's the line. You put my tears in your bottle. What do you think? <laughs> 
did I hear someone say A? So I think I heard one vote for the melodramatic country music song. It's actually the same psalm. It's actually the same psalm from David. And David is saying to the divine, my enemies are numberless. I am beset on all sides by fear, by torment, by negativity, by those that want to destroy me. And you realize all of this is always an inner drama. And so David is saying, within myself, I am beset by fears, by negativity, by that which wants to destroy me within myself. And he says to the divine, you put my tears in your bottle. You register all of my misery in your book. And what he's saying right there, he, it's not a lament. It's actually a thank God. God knows every single tear that goes coursing down these cheeks. They're caught in the divine bottle. Some of the translations say actually divine wineskin, which also makes me smile. So every single tear that we cry, it's caught in the divine bottle. It's numbered. It matters. The divine knows every misery that we have ever suffered. The divine is with us. There is total non-separateness, which means that even if we are beset by the most incredible human suffering, the divine is right there with us. And when we have that awareness, we have that fullness, we have that awakeness, we have that aliveness. Okay, so now, this is one of those, if I let myself, I would cry. So we'll see how I do. <laughs> sometimes I'm able to hold back and sometimes I'm not. So this is a true story. And it's a story about a human man who was married. And he and his wife had five children. And they loved the five children very much. And he loved his wife very much. And they lived through a time of trauma and violence and challenge in human history. And so this man lived through seeing his wife and all five of their children killed by soldiers right in front of him, lined up and shot right in front of him. And this man said, here's the part that makes me cry. I have seen what hate can do. I will not give way to hate. I will choose to love every human I encounter for the rest of my life. I will find a way to love every human who comes before me for the rest of my life. And so <laughs> each of us is invited to make that same choice. Each of us has seen what human hatred and confusion and fear is capable of producing. We don't always experience it in exactly the same way as that amazing human being experienced it. But each of us knows what trauma we have experienced, what betrayal, what tragedy, what loss, what abandonment. And each of us is invited to make the same choice. Inwardly, as you are inspired, each of us is invited to vow, I have seen what human confusion, what human pain, what human fear, what human misery, what human trauma is capable of creating. I choose to create otherwise. I choose to create forgiveness. I choose to follow in the footsteps of those who have walked the earth before and have recognized, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I turn and face myself and I acknowledge that there's no human on the planet 
who hasn't at least occasionally, at least unintentionally, created pain and confusion for another. And so, Father, forgive me. I know not what I do. So each of us is invited to open the heart of forgiveness and to allow the vast, expansive love of the whole universe, the love that moves the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets, the love that is there in every grain of sand, the love that breathes every time we breathe, that fills us with life energy. The vastness of that love is able to forgive where humanly we sometimes stumble. We sometimes don't know how. And so each of us is inviting the love that moves the sun and the moon and the stars. The love that loves the tiniest ant, the tiniest pismire, the love that loves every one of your neutrophils <laughs> and has given you this incredible divine love and support built into your body temple. The love that is warmth and connection and affection and caring within you. Invite that to be the energy of forgiveness through you when humanly you don't know how. And when you connect with that love, you realize the divine has been there in every tear. The divine laughs with me and rejoices with me and dances with me when I laugh and rejoice and dance. The divine walks with me. I walk in the light of life. And notice how it's possible to radiate the same loving awareness, the same forgiveness back through our generations to all of our ancestors. The ones who were able to extend unconditional love to us, the ones who humanly had issues, as we would say today, offer unconditional gratitude and love to all of our ancestors, to the incredible lines of light that descend through all of the ancestors and support us and strengthen us now. also offering unconditional gratitude and love and respect and celebration to Swami Shankarananda and to all of the spiritual ancestors, to everyone who has been here, who makes these teachings of truth and strength and delight present and available to each one of us. Allowing ourselves to feel the warmth, the connection, the love that is our own true nature, our own eternal name, the belovedness within each of us. That is fearless. And so that is why David is able to say, in God I trust and am not afraid. It's the divine aspect of David reaching out and comforting the human aspect of David. And so each of us is able to offer that same comfort to the human aspects of ourselves and to the human aspects of everyone whom we encounter. And then, fearlessly, we walk in the light of life. Fearlessly, we are able to be present with clarity, with peace, with joy, with delight, whatever it is that we are moving through or encountering, and with whatever anyone else 
is moving through our encountering. So you can feel this incredible connectedness that each of us is, this incredible warmth, this incredible pure love energy that radiates through us. So when we connect with this individually, it is amazing. When we connect with it together at the same time, it multiplies, it amplifies. And so it's as if we're raising a wave of light, raising a wave of fearlessness, raising a wave of healing, raising a wave of acceptance, raising a wave of forgiveness. Reaching out through every layer of our own body, our own heart, our own mind, our own life, and allowing that warmth, that love, that connection to infuse us and succor us and strengthen us, delight us, gladden us, and then allowing that energy to share with us, through us, as us, right in the midst of our daily lives. When we live in this awareness, we live in the reality within each of us is the city of Brahman. Within each of us is the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the new earth. Within each of us is the ability to make all things new. Every time we connect with this incredible light of life, this ability and courage and willingness to keep moving forward, we walk in the light of life. And as we do, the city of light becomes visible around us. It is already here in consciousness. Each of us is invited to live in that city of light, to behold the newness within ourselves and within all. Looking back through the generations to our ancestors, beholding that same light of life, that same newness, that same unconditional love that makes this incredible journey possible for each one of us. And so we give such thanks. We rejoice and we fill ourselves with the energy of absolute freedom, the energy of peace beyond expression, the energy of perfection, the energy of amazement that remembers the beautiful miracle that is present in this body, in this heart, in this mind, in this life, as each one of us and is equally present in the sun, in the breeze that blows across your cheek, in the earth beneath your feet, in the clear, cool, beautiful waters, in every breath of life, which comes straight from the breath of the internal and infuses each of us with such incredible radiance, such incredible blessing. Thank God and God bless us all. <laughs>